Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Man's Nostalgia. We revisit everybody's favorite shows, movies, and games from the mid '90s to mid 2000s. Don't worry, we'll take the bullet. Justin, why don't you tell us uh, what we watched this week? We watched Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. <laughs> Before we get into anything else, <laughs> I have a couple things to say. Why? <laughs> because I think it, this is going to be a fun game this week. I really like this movie. We're going to play a game? I've liked it for a long time, and I'm already giving you a point. Now, here's the secret. <laughs> if you say enough annoying things to me over the next hour <laughs> that makes me do not like this movie, you lose my point. <laughs> you know, okay, we thought, we've done we've done your Power Rangers, and what was the other thing we did with yours? It was uh, Pokemon. Pokemon. All of those, you were like, yeah, this is terrible. I feel like anything that we say bad about this movie, you're just going to be really upset. You're going to cry. And, and you might leave. It's gonna, <laughs> this may be the truth, though. Okay. That I was joking about. I may actually cry if you hate the movie. Did you really like this movie that much when you were little? Man, I am into this I, can you not tell could you not tell but were you when it came out yeah oh yeah okay yeah let's, let's say this up front too um this is gonna be a spoiler episode for all eight <laughs> i am i am not holding <laughs> back <laughs> well i mean we can't like say oh this is a secret because it... snape kills dumbledore oh. you've been warned <laughs> well there you go all right look this thing's been out forever <laughs> all right if you haven't read this by now justin's getting touchy i'm <laughs> sorry all right. No, I just don't like it when you obviously see a is a review of something. Look, you're gonna spoil stuff. All right. If you click on review, yeah, you're gonna get spoiled. Yeah, you're gonna get spoiled. Sorry, unless we say no spoilers, which we never will. Okay. What? So let me tell you guys, I'm not like I'm I'm a fan of Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. I'm not a huge fan of Harry Potter. Obviously. Justin's a very big fan of yeah. Harry Potter, and I would say Chris, you're probably I, around I've read the, the same. I read the books twice, and I've seen all the movies. A couple of times. I really enjoy like, I've read a couple of the books and that was it. Yeah. Our, our knowledge is on par. And watch the movies. Our knowledge is on par. You think so? I think so. Okay. I, I'm just a lot more. Even though I, I schooled Justin on like two things <laughs> two. when we were watching it. I have like 20. <laughs> but they weren't like book facts. They were more like um, actor stuff, which, yeah. is, which is still good. Look, yeah. I have so much in this head. <laughs> but. Uh, your head's so big, you're right. Like your head is a very but I, abnormal size. <laughs> But, uh, whoa, dang, jeez, he's called me a big-ass head. <laughs> That's not what I said. You basically, as you said, your head is not a normal size. I'm not going to defend you. <laughs> <laughs> you got a big-ass head, too. <laughs> All right, so how many wands do you have, Justin? How many wands? I have two wands. All right. Who's I that? have Harry's wand, and I have Voldemort's wand before he got the Elder Wand. How many, how many Gryffindor, how much Gryffindor swag do you have? I have a scarf. Okay. And I have slippers. Have you did take, you have did you, you buy anything when we went to? You bought the scarf. About the scarf. You about you, the scarf. You said it looks cool. <laughs> <laughs> you did. And it did. You liked it. How many? Hey, I have a story about that. <laughs> no. Oh, go ahead, John. No, get, move on. <laughs> you want to retell we'll, that story? We'll put the time good again. I put it on the last episode. We'll put it on this. We've one said too. this two or three times. People are going to get tired of it. No, I don't think so. Okay, I so think so. Let's, let me tell no, you. No, move happened. on. <laughs> Chris, real quick, he pulled a fire alarm in Hogwarts at Universal Studios, <laughs> and it went on for about twenty minutes. Right. And when it went off, everybody clapped. Okay, <laughs> back to the story. Um, okay, okay. Have you taken the online quiz to tell you what school you're in? I am a Gryffindor. <laughs> are you proud about that? Not only do I have the quiz to uh, back, to back this up, <laughs> I have a video <laughs> oh, from, from J.K. Rowling telling no, no, you. No, that. So. Um, <laughs> You know the Warner Brothers studio? Like, You've been like there. A, yeah. You've been in the Warner Brothers studio. I don't know if it was oh, up the, when the you sorting hat. The sorting hat. Yeah. I have a video of the sorting hat telling me I am from I am in Gryffindor. So out, so proof <laughs> that Justin is in fact a Gryffindor. I'll, you know what? I'll even pull it up. You want me to play I, the audio? I really don't, I really don't, want, to, hey, you want I really don't want you to. No, no. How about I put the audio in? You send me the video. I'll put the audio in. You okay. can't see it. Best story. 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 Best
And it, it did say he was in Gryffindor. It did. So two things proving that you are a Gryffindor. But was it like was it like would you have a Gryffindor, a Slytherin, and then like the next person got Hufflepuff, you know what, that and was... then the next person got Ravenclaw, and, you, you, you and then it goes back to Gryffindor. <laughs> you know what? You know I wouldn't I wouldn't put it past it that being the case. Would, but... I bet like ninety nine percent of people get Gryffindor. I'm and I bet I bet Slytherin's not even an option. It, no, I heard I did hear I did hear Slytherin. Oh, did you? But I th- it's probably eighty percent. Did they yell? They were like. Oh my god! I think Justin I, 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 I think Justin would have cried. <laughs> I would have. <laughs> How old were you when this happened? Twenty-three. <laughs> <laughs> Solid. Okay. Here we go. All okay, right. so back I to can this. just picture Justin like smiling, sitting down on a chair, just smiling the whole time with his hat on. <laughs> it, the, the hat didn't fit. <laughs> He'd be like Gryffindor, Gryffindor, Gryffindor. The hat didn't fit because he's too old to be wearing it. <laughs> It's all for like eleven year olds, and here comes Justin pushing kids out of the way to sit in the. Hat. But you know uh, the funny. <laughs> so we grew. This was our. This was definitely in our uh, time range. A lot of people our age uh, yeah. are in the Harry Potter. I read. I read the first three books. Yeah. I remember our senior year. Everybody going to camp out to get the uh, last the book. Yeah, I remember. Book. Yeah, I remember. And then we year, saw the seventh and eighth movie the, together. We did. Potter books. Yeah, yeah, they're really good. Um. No, no, they are really good. All right, just all right. Um, so, John, you know the least about this movie. I do. Tell us the plot. Oh, okay. Well, uh, Harry, Harry's parents die from this person that uh, everyone says in the wizard community. Uh, some what did they say? All Someone they really say in the name. first one is that oh, he who must like, not be named. Yeah, he who must not be named. But all they really so, say in the first one is that he's bad. They don't really say what he did. They you yeah, it they later. say well, they, wizards can go bad, and he was the baddest of them all. Yeah, right. So Harry's parents very die from this mysterious villain that no one really knows about until the very kind of towards the end of the the movie. So Harry gets dropped off at uh, his aunt and uncle's house, and kind of goes through his his uh, childhood until he's 11 and he gets a letter that he gets accepted into Hogwarts and then for wizards for wizards yeah uh, so they go get Harry they bring him to Hogwarts and he didn't know how famous he was until no so like he, I don't when, know why we're when explaining he, this no it's okay when he, <laughs> he first, doesn't know the story of Harry yeah Potter. when go he on. first gets when he first go gets there <laughs> uh, everyone kind of is like oh it's Harry Potter and he doesn't really know why he's so famous uh, eventually Hagrid tells him why and why everyone knows him uh, so they kind of go through like this kind of storyline when he's at school, and um, he makes two friends. He makes two friends. Makes some villains. Yep, meets some villains. He gets confused about who the villain is yep. throughout the the story, and then at the very end of the movie, you feel you you find out that one of the professors is. Uh, I, I, I don't know how he has to describe it. Back in his head. <laughs> he has the Voldemort spirit inside him. In the back of his head. In, in the back of his head. Literally. Yeah, literally. It's in the literally back a of his face head. in the back of his head. Uh, so then, Harry, uh, spoiler, he touches him and he like, disintegrates <laughs> in front of him. And uh, then, yep. uh, yeah, that's so, kind of. Well, the I put it like that. It sounds stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, read, it is pretty stupid. I, I read this book when I was, I think, eight. And it was the first book that I think I read with a twist. So, like, the whole... I remember reading it and, like, my what mind... What was the big being, twist? Well, they, it's not Snape. Because the whole time... Oh, okay. It's Snape. Yeah, we are. And I thought that was just really cool. I remember, like, in my head, I was, my brain just, like, exploded. It's the first time I ever, like, witnessed a twist It literally like that. exploded. Almost. And for a lot of people... <laughs> yeah. Man, I loved these books when I was a kid. It was one of the first big books I think a lot of people read. They were big books. It was, it was like, a, it was the first big, big novel a lot of us read. Yeah. So, it really... For a lot of people, it really, uh, <clears throat> it really stuck into our bra- our heads, and you know, it was the first time like we kind of besides Pokemon stuff that it was a big like. I wouldn't even say Harry Potter was a fad because it's still so. Uh, oh yeah, they're still making movies. Yeah. I mean, they have parks over it and everything, mm-hmm. so it definitely wasn't a fad. It was definitely something. It was definitely a pop culture like moment. Yeah, 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 it's like Star Wars from like thirty years mm-hmm. ago. Like it was what Star Wars did. Right. That's what I kind of right. put it as. Uh, a lot of people too. thought that. And I'm not saying everyone thought that, but a lot of people thought that when it came to transitioning from the book to the movies, they did a pretty good job. They did. And casting a lot of they, the characters. They did, for sure, the first two. And yeah. uh, I kind of I wrote a note about that. Because that's Christopher Columbus. He directed the first two movies. The second movie is almost His name's off. Christopher Columbus? Yeah. <laughs> I think he goes like Chris. It's Chris Columbus. <laughs> Chris Columbus. Let's call him Christopher. <laughs> uh, he directed uh, Home Alone. Okay. But... I think that was Home Alone 2. Maybe. Was it 1 and 2? I think it was both. 
Oh, I can't remember. It was John Hughes wrote it. But I know it was Hughes. definitely Home Alone 2. Yeah. yeah but I think it was Home Alone 2, guys. <laughs> but what's interesting about him is that the that second... A question, John. And I think this is really interesting because the second movie came out. I don't really personally like the second movie or the book, but it's almost spot on. Like it's almost the, it's almost the exact same as the book, word for word, almost to the point. So let's go. Know. Let's focus on the first book and the first movie. We'll try. Let's, uh, let's oh, talk. Oh, okay, okay, Chris, did okay, you read the book? Off, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Justin. No, Chris, did you read the book when when it came out? So I read the first three. When it came out, I, okay. I bought the fourth one, but I could not get through. It was way too long. I have enough time. To That's my to favorite book, though. Well, now it is. Now I really enjoy. It. We can go over that towards the end, like yeah. our favorite books and stuff. But uh, at the time, I couldn't finish it. I didn't have enough attention span. I was like ten years old. Okay. But right. I did read the first three, and I read this one, and I think it's the first movie I saw where I had read the book before, and I was like blown away. Probably me too. And it was really cool. I mean, since then there was a lot. But like, how, how old were you? Ten. It came out when we were ten. But I read it. When yeah, I was, I was eleven. Yeah, yeah, I was eleven. And it was, it was, and like I said, he did a really good job at doing. It. Like, it, it's just crazy. We can talk about it more. So I want to, I want to start with our big three first. So the, the three most important: Harry, Ron, and Hermione. Are you doing fun facts? Okay, sort of. Fun facts about Harry Potter. Do do do. I want to start with Harry first right. because I remember um, the best seeing the magazine, <laughs> seeing in the magazines, <laughs> um, them casting for Harry Potter. Now the 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 thing that J.K. Rowling wanted for sure was an all English and uh, Irish cast because there were some Americans that like they wanted to do it. But Christopher Columbus, this is the funny part, only wanted Daniel Radcliffe. Mm -hmm. So what happened was when they were going through the casting process, uh, he actually showed a video, a clip of Daniel Radcliffe and David Copperfield to the casting people. He said, "This is what I'm looking for," and it was Daniel Radcliffe in his first role. And they kept going through people and people, and they were like, I, he's like, I want Radcliffe. The issue was that his parents didn't want him growing up uh, with that life. Because what had turned to happen to him was he actually became an alcoholic towards the end. He did. Yeah, yeah he was a he was like a like a, like not hardcore like you know hurting people and everything, but he was like he was an a, a he really was bad, drunk on set. He, he was a really he bad was, alcoholic. He said he was drunk on set. Really? Um, but what's cool? I about know that. some people were. Oh, I know, like, I don't know if it's true, but the, I know there was a rumor going around that uh, Rowling didn't like the cast because they were too good looking, and she that, wanted that, to that's be plain. For, that's true for Hermione. Really, so, I thought it was true. But for that was every, like all the cast. She, no, no, she said that. Or all the the big three. She said that I read. I, I watched an interview on YouTube where she said that that when they casted Emma Watson as Hermione, uh, she called. J.K. Rowling, it was just like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I just rambled and rambled and rambled. And J.K. Rowling's like, you're perfect. Because you're just like rambling. You know what I mean? How J.K. Rowling, you know, yeah. her, uh, Hermione does that. And then she met her. And she said if she would have met her before she like heard her voice, she wouldn't have wanted to. Because she said she could tell by looking at her, she was going to be like gorgeous. And Hermione's not supposed to be that way. She's supposed to be like a really, plain, really looking, dorky, yeah. really buck teeth, stuff like that. She knew that she wasn't so going to. Let's, let's stay on Harry for just a, a little bit longer. Oh, yeah. So, so his look. Because the one yeah, of the biggest things from book to uh, to film that. is look. Yeah. I remember that. See, I don't. Everyone I didn't mind it. That. I didn't mind it. I didn't really care too much about it. Why didn't he wear the the contacts? Because they said it messed. It hurt his eyes. He's allergic to them. Oh. Yeah. And J.K. Rowling said she didn't care as long as he yes. had the same color as his mother. Because she she basically had to cool. uh, sign off on everything. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> his hair is not as messy as it. Is described in the books, but once again, it's not that big of a deal. Um, his scar, people were mad about his scar because apparently in the drawings they're all in the center. But Rowling said it never says specifically in the book mm -hmm. where his scar is. So I think it's left. <laughs> I think it's top left is where the scar is in the movie. Uh -huh. um, but top other right. than that, I yeah, think I was, it's top right. Yeah, I was about to say is it top right. Yeah. I was. I was, oh, okay. I schooled I was, him. I was like, I don't all think right. that's I'm correct. taking. I'm taking over fun facts because Justin Clue doesn't know anything. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> So, um, but the other thing about him is Daniel Radcliffe is really short mm -hmm. comparatively, and uh, Harry is supposed to be long and lanky. Well, Radcliffe is lanky, but he wasn't very tall. Well, they didn't know that he, was, it, he wasn't. Yeah, so, so isn't Weasley supposed to be fat? No, no, Weasley was supposed to be really tall, and he's supposed to have like a, like a big nose. Oh yeah, yeah. I think he's most accurate of everybody else, though, because he does turn out to be kind of tall. So I thought Ron. Like, Ron's mannerisms and everything, I think, are pretty spot on yeah. for his character. And then we have Hermione. 
You said that way too quick and way too happily. <laughs> no, no go ahead. Start, Chris. I'm trying to move Why do you want to talk about Hermione so much? She becomes a very attractive young woman when she's of age. <laughs> not right now. That's not what you said to me yesterday. <laughs> it is not. I said specifically in a text message, are we going to talk about how attractive she is now? So the, so the, the backup characters are also really spot on. So... Snape is one I think they nailed the most. They did nail, yeah. Alan Rick and Rowling picked out Rickman personally. Yeah, like she knew. She actually gave him um, like secrets about yeah. Snape's character from later on. He, he knew the ending before. Yeah, he else. knew all about Snape's past and everything about before anybody else. Lily. Again, spoiler alert. <laughs> but it's but yeah. I'll get to That's my I'll cool. get to my Snape rant in another episode. So it's funny. No, we get. We, I want to hear it this time because it's really interesting actually, and I think it's true. So I think we should. Oh, so you want me to rag on Snape? Yeah, but we don't do it right now. Okay. Anyway, let's talk about Dumbledore, though. I want to go on my Dumbledore rant, if you don't mind. Okay, Dumbledore rant. Take so, one. So, I like Dumbledore a lot in this movie, and he's also in the second movie, and then he sadly and died. Then he dies. <laughs> so, do you not like It'd Gambin? No, I don't like Gambin. I think the issue with Gambin was the direction they took. I don't think it was Gambin's fault. No, you're probably right. But he, but like, this, this Dumbledore, like, show, like, he has a sweet voice. Yes. He's very polite. The, the other, he's almost too young. I know that sounds terrible. Gambin's almost too young to play this kind of guy because he's supposed to be old and frail until like a switch goes off and he like kicks ass. <laughs> like honestly, that's what Dumbledore yeah. is supposed to be. And I don't think I think this one nailed it. The other one did not. The problem, the problem with Dumbledore, the problem with a lot of that characterization too was they had so many different directors after right. that. And I don't mind Gambin's Dumbledore. I know it's not the Dumbledore from the books. The only issue I ever had was in the the Goblet of Fire. Yes, the, the famous one where he yells, and it's really supposed to be Dumbledore, you know, being nice. So it's at, it's right after he puts his his uh, paper in the Goblet of Fire, right? Or he, they, he comes out, right? And then Harry's in the he's room. Like, Harry yeah, he, he runs and in there. He's like, Harry. he's like Harry. He's like shaking him. He's like, did you put your name in there? In the book, he like sits there calmly while everybody else argues, and he goes like polite. He says like it says specifically quietly. He says. Harry, did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire? I think right. he... And that's what everybody freaked out about. Everybody's like, see, this is why the Dumbledore sucks. So the problem <laughs> the problem was Richard Harris played such a good Dumbledore that it was really... I think he. I think they wanted to... They wouldn't be able to do it. Maybe he edited himself and he'd be like, okay, hey, I think I need to scream here. I need to show how you know good of an actor I, I am. <laughs> that could have been the case. It could have been the case, that but... I hate him more. Yeah, but I don't think he was a, especially in the sixth book, I in the sixth movie, I don't think he was bad True. because you obviously need a more physical actor to play that. Yeah, he, did he did he exude the um, the the you know the old manness and the the grace that the first Dumbledore did, Richard Harris? No, but did he play the other parts of Dumbledore well? I think he did. Sure, he is fine. Yeah, so yes, Richard Harris. I wish he could have stayed, but he was also really old then. Too. Like he was in bad health even when they <clears throat> cast him. Let's start with kind of just let's talk about just the first half of the movie. Anything of note before he gets to Hogwarts? Anything yeah, funny so, that happened? Okay, well something kind of cool is that. Let's section it off. Let's do the first. The first part we'll talk about before Hogwarts. Okay, okay. Uh, I have a couple things. Um, I'm surprised nobody in the envelope scene got a paper cut. <laughs> True. <laughs> Man, that was a real. That was a really cool visual scene, though. Yeah, it was. Wasn't that? Yeah. I mean, just all the envelopes. They used that in the trailer. I remember they showed that that uh, ceiling view of him like trying to grab one. I remember yeah. they used that in the trailer. And I love the Dursleys. But there's like, but they like sit there screaming and like it's like jabbing the the old man in the face. Like I'm surprised nobody got a paper cut. And I love the Dursleys. They're, They're pretty good. They're comically terrible. They're though. magic. It's magic paper. No one gets paper cuts. And if that was a real True. person, and somebody came over and saw that he was stuck in a broom closet, they would have like called child custody. Oh yeah, because <laughs> I mean it's not good. I mean yeah, I don't think I don't think it's if, it, if you're listening to this in a, a log closet, I think you, you need to get out of there. Please call somebody. The way they did the Dursleys, I care. <laughs> the way the way it was perfect. You know, I think it was perfectly cast. Yeah, perfect. The the house was perfect. They said they tried to find the worst furniture they could, and I think they did. Really? Well, and they they kept with the book pretty well at the very beginning. The only thing the is, the, you know, the difference physically. Of the house? Of the Dursleys? Uh, I think Dudley was supposed to be fatter, right? So they're both supposed to, him and the dad are supposed to be blonde. Oh, I don't remember that blonde. part. 
<laughs> Here goes Chris. He's going to load they over me. Blind. But I will say Petunia is like perfect. So behind Chris, there's a scoreboard. <laughs> and every time Chris gets something right that I don't know, he puts a little check by can his name. A, can I put a ding? Not, I mean, I'll put a scoreboard on the uh, description. You one. really should put a ding. That would be pretty funny. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. The only other thing I had was something that's kind of cool is that the small person who plays the Green Galtz guy is Vern Troyer. Yeah, and... Ha, ding! No, I didn't say it wasn't. Um, <laughs> and, then, and then the wand maker... You just said it before you. <laughs> I ding, said it ding. ding! And then the wand maker were both in the last movie, which is cool. Like the same... That was John Hurt. Right. Uh, Ollivander. The same Do- actors. Doctor Who. It's pretty cool yeah. they came back he like, was a doctor. 10 years later. Was he? He was one of the doctors. Was he? I didn't know that. Yeah, he, he was the eighth doctor, I think. Cool. He's pretty... He, he, they nailed him, I thought too. we were talking... About- are we still talking about before Hogwarts? Yeah, we're talking about before Hogwarts. Oh, okay. Yeah, and, I love the Ollivander scene. Did you guys, when you watch this, were you comparing it to like the Disney World that we went to? Universal. Universal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah I mean, I don't. I, I didn't see in this movie any fire alarms in Hogwarts. <laughs> I mean, I didn't either. <laughs> but other than that, do you remember that? Do you remember that uh, like spiel that they? Did right before oh, we the, went to the the wand? Yeah, the creepy wand lady. <laughs> she oh was, yeah, she was way overacting on that. You remember that? I remember that. There was like, <laughs> there was like, okay, so right before you go into like the wand store, so this is at Universal. Yeah, this yeah. is at Universal. Right Potter's, before you go yeah. into the wand store, I definitely recommend there is a there is a woman. Yeah, it's a really cool. Yeah, there's a woman that kind of gives away a wand in this kind of. Spiel. She's supposed to be Ollivander. Yeah. yeah. Well, she's supposed to be Ollivander's assistant. She yeah, says she's Ollivander's assistant in it. Yeah. Ding. Ding. <laughs> and, she, and she acts her heart out. Oh, she was way overacting. I feel like it's like a failing actress trying really hard to. <laughs> or she's just really bored and she's just hamming it up to her. And, and yeah, maybe. And maybe just like a creepy girl that we all knew in high school and college that were really into Harry Potter <laughs> that could have easily played that person. You yeah. know what I mean? We all the got the, into the, her. The theater girl. She's like, she finally is like, I finally got my dream role. <laughs> I have a robe. <laughs> John, Justin, how close were you? To spend the hundred fifty dollars on the robe, or how much? Not very close at all. Really? That's see, I I'll, I'll spend the thirty on the wand. That's cool, but the robe, because I'll 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 have the wand there. I can look at it, but the robe I'm not gonna wear. Okay. So it's like I'll wear the scarf. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that's not weird, right? Yeah. Weird, okay. So <laughs> let's do Hogwarts to Halloween. I right, so they're on the Hogwarts Express. Um, and he meets Ron the first time. I thought that was a really good scene. Let me just say that. Nothing against the actors. They're great actresses and actors. But thank God they got better. Yeah, it was rough. <laughs> I mean, rough. honestly, it was a gamble. And all three of them stayed uh, pretty normal. Like, I mean, you talked about him being alcoholic. That kind of sucks. But, like, normally these, like, kid actors become, like, nuts. And yeah. thank God they, like, stayed normal and they they got a lot better acting. <laughs> yeah, from they our, probably per- our perspective, they stayed normal. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, they, yeah, we don't know, I guess, about their personal lives. But, yeah. Like, they don't, none of them are, like, you know, running around naked. <laughs> around. Shaving their heads. <laughs> Shaving their heads, exactly. <laughs> Which could easily have happened. But no, thank God they got better acting. And they did. They got a lot better. Yeah. Uh, okay, so um, the train scene was pretty cool. <laughs> it's um, a cool train. I. You know, just when you get into Hogwarts, when you they first show, doesn't the atmosphere that they built with that, with all those uh, sets? Yeah. You know, because number one, almost every single shot you see is a real castle. Mm-hmm. The only time you they're actually uh, in a actual like uh, sound stage is the Great Hall was built, right. which I think you can walk through in England now, uh-huh. and the common room. Well, I thought wasn't some of it like shot in Cambridge or something, like, or like old old. Castle-like colleges. I think that's there, true. There's a there's a couple of colleges, yes, and there's a couple of castles they 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 uh, filmed. Did you hear about the candles? I did not hear about the candles. Ding. All right. Well, you don't get so, dings. <laughs> okay, at first, they used um, real candles and they hung them by wires that's for a cool. while. And you can actually see a wire in one of the scenes during the Sorting Hat ceremony. What frame? Behind McGonagall. What frame? Uh, frame three thousand five hundred and eight. Okay, um, but you can Look see it, it up. Behind... Look it up. <laughs> but you can see it behind McGonagall. Um, what happened was uh, one of the one of the candles fell and caught the set on fire. Oh, dang! So they had to use CGI f- after that. Oh, that's they sad. also used real food during that movie, oh. uh, the first one. But over two days, the smell got really bad. So in the second, <laughs> in the second movie, they just ca- they just took food, cast it in resin, and just left it out like, that way, and only have food when the actors actually had to eat. Interesting. Oh, ding! I mean, that would have been, but that would have been dang for two days. That's, that's kind of bad. That's gross. But yeah, but 
like the first day, that would have been kind of cool to just see like a huge feast and be oh, like, yeah. hey, we're gonna film you eating. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So Except for don't get too fat, guys. <laughs> when, when, I, when, when I talk about when I talk about CG. Um, it's definitely very rough in this movie. Oh yeah, and it looks like a video oh game. okay. So the fact so hold on. Okay. So the fact they were trying to use practical as much as possible kind of tells you how uh, far along CG was still there. Well, yeah. Like, I mean, you think about it, they were probably making it in '99, which was because nowadays, if you just said, "Oh, there's candles floating," no, we're just gonna put it in CGI. Yeah, exactly. Now, but back then, it was like, okay, what can we do? Well, shoot, to did did the keep uh, it from it. Was there like a green screen like on the top of the the great hall? I'm sure there was. I'm sure there was. Or was it like I don't know, like a but painting or something like that? Or? It's probably a green screen. More than likely. But so. yeah, the worst part of the CGI was definitely them on brooms. They had and a- they talked about how tough that 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 was so tough. They did that scene, those scenes last. Oh really? Yeah. So um, they they actually filmed those last because the the teams were trying to figure out how to actually shoot that. Because they knew they were going to have to use some CG, but a lot of it was actually pretty practical. It looked like, yeah, it looked like they were using. Because you can um, at the Warner Brothers Studios, there is the broom thing you can ride. Still, they had they had the actors on brooms through there. Oh, like you can ride like I see what you're saying. I yeah, you're saying like the ride. No, so like, like you rode the ride, the ride the one... that you pulled the fire alarm. <laughs> Man, that's not going to be old. <laughs> Wait, you pulled the fire alarm? <laughs> so and. Me and Chris has been to the uh, Warner Brothers LA studio. They have like a museum there, and yes. you, did they have the the, the uh, broom there you could ride? No. Your, so, so did you just not know me when you guys took this trip or something like that? We go together. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, it was just a day trip. Yeah, we just a decided, bro decided, day decided day. to drive, decided to drive over there to see Harry Potter. No, we've been uh, laughing. <laughs> John's not with us. When I went, it was the seventy fifth. It was the seventy fifth anniversary of Batman. So they were more focused on Batman. I so. did see all the Batman vehicles. Those were pretty cool. Pretty cool. Let's talk about Batman. <laughs> <laughs> see, okay, so what, so what you, was it in California? Yeah. yeah. So what was it the Warner Brothers what's lot? Better, That's cool. What's better, Justin? The, um, the Power Rangers movie CGI or this CGI? <laughs> that C- <laughs> Harry Potter CGI. Are you sure? I'm 100% sure. All right. I have a question about Quidditch. Okay. All right. John? See if you can answer this. Are you asking me? John. Don't ask me. Um, <laughs> okay, so they say that when you get the snitch, you get 150 points. Yeah. And you also win the game. That's wrong. Okay. No, the, doesn't the score go to a certain amount? So here's what. So when when a wood was talking to Harry, all right, oh. is this what you're talking about? Yeah. You get this, Potter, we win. All right? Right. That was wrong. So... Technically, you can lose if you get the snitch. Correct. Referring to the fourth book, all right, in the World, in the world, in the world Cup. Cup, Crumb actually catches the golden snitch. You know snitch what I'm talking about. <laughs> because the Irish actually um, got enough points, or like it was like 200 to like 20 or something. You know, they had a bunch of points off just shooting it in the uh, hoops. So Crumb just got the snitch just to end the game because people were getting hurt left and right. So it's only worth 150 points. But normally the uh, but you, normally you win yes but you have to get the snitch to win you, you have to get the snitch to end the game right no you can win without getting but the yet snitch. oh okay so what what happens if the game does just keeps going they always joke like there was a game that went on for a month and they have to like put in reserves so the people can sleep yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they do make a joke it's kind of funny yeah. Or the or the so, Weasley Tins were messing with them. Oh, referee's been lost a couple of times before. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> or somebody's vanished. The game doesn't end until they get the snitch. Yep. Right, and right. then whoever has the most points at the very end. So if you get the snitch, wins. you get 150. So normally, if you get the snitch, you win. Yeah, because yeah. the other people haven't scored 150. 100. Um. Okay. Uh. The only other thing I had before Halloween is that Hermione's really annoying. Really annoying. Which is why they don't like her. Well, yeah, but she's it's it's bad. And her acting doesn't help. Like she's not very good at acting, so I think that actually adds to it. Her being annoying. Yeah. I Later guess on, so. it doesn't help, but in the beginning, like she, de- they definitely nailed who Hermione what was. What was your in the beginning. favorite lines? Like kind of at the beginning, not at the very like throughout the movie, but kind of towards the very beginning, like best scenes, I guess. Since we're breaking it up into two different. Uh, I guess I like. Mm. Okay, so as a kid, I think it would have been really cool to see Quidditch being played. You know what I mean? Because yeah. they, they talk about it, everybody loves it, but to see like how fast-paced it was, even though the CGI was terrible during the Quidditch, it was cool to see how fast-paced and stuff the Quidditch scene was. You know what I mean? Quidditch yeah. definitely was my favorite when I was a kid. Yeah. 
Okay. Did you play oh. the game, the Quidditch game? Quidditch World Cup? Yeah. That was fun. Uh, by the way, uh, I, I didn't mention this until now. I didn't watch any of these movies when I was little. I watched it when I was, like, in college. Oh, really? Yeah, so I, I don't have, like... So you had no childhood. <laughs> so did you... Did you I didn't, I didn't have watching your Dragon child. Ball Z. I didn't have your childhood. <laughs> the fifth episode of Goku <laughs> powering up. <laughs> All right, so my, ah! my family did the Harry Potter. Movie? My family oh, yeah. grew up very conservative, mm-hmm. and when it came to, uh, I guess, magic and stuff, like I, I wasn't allowed to watch it or read it, and I, I couldn't watch, you know, Smurfs. Oh yeah, couldn't watch Smurfs either. Smurfs. Yeah, it has magic in it. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I but like, okay. What about Dragon Ball Z? I could watch it. That's weird. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's some magic in there. There's Killian in that. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there is. But it's not the devil. Um, I, could, I could watch Friends when I, think, I was I think... little. But I couldn't, I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't read Harry Potter. My parents, my parents just happy to have me read something. As we as we discovered last week, I had a third grade, third grade leaving level in sixth grade. So wait, okay, so what did you, <laughs> so you think of? Did like, you really say that last week? That yeah. kind of, I must have bypassed. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was bad. Well, so what it did you? Bad. What did you? Um, or was that two weeks ago? I don't even know. It doesn't matter. Yeah. What did you? So what did you think as a college person watching these? Because the first three or four, first three are really kiddish, like, and they get darker and darker, just like the books. But what did you think as like the college kid watching these first couple of movies? All right. So I knew the storyline a little bit because all your like, friends were nerds for it. Yeah. Well, basically, <laughs> and then like everyone would talk about it. Like when I when we were in high school and a little bit in middle school and everything, so I had a lot of spoilers going into this. Sure, I knew what was going on. Yeah. Um, when it came to the story, I thought it was pretty interesting, and that's why I the first time I watched Harry Potter, I watched about four of them in a row. Oh yeah, because I was just like, oh, this is awesome! Like this is really really. They cool. do a really good job at universe building for sure. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The world building's excellent. I yeah. didn't read the books and I didn't read the first two books until I watched all the way through the movies, and then mm-hmm. I went back to the books. Oh. How you live life. <laughs> <laughs> Justin's like cringing over here when I'm talking like, oh, God. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> All right, let's do Halloween to the end. Okay. So now we get the we get the three together. Three amigos. They're friends so now. They have Christmas, and this is one of my It's big... like us. <laughs> it is. The three it's... amigos. Who's <laughs> 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 Hermione? I knew the question was coming. I think everyone was thinking that. Who's <laughs> <laughs> Hermione? <laughs> well, Justin's hair. He has, or J- Justin's hair. He has glasses. And very hairy. Or actually, he's part Hermione. <laughs> Why do you think that? A little bit nerdier. Oh yeah, he's like he he knows everything. <laughs> John, you're probably Harry because he becomes a little, uh, a little lady, badass. Ladies, that... <laughs> ladies man. Oh, does he? <laughs> well, girls like him because they think he's like a star. Famous. Are you trying to tell me I'm a star? No, I don't. No, they think you're famous. They think he's famous. Oh. Yeah. So they're, you're not famous. really, but and then they're brutally disappointed because <laughs> <laughs> he's such a moron. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to the Christmas. That was, that was bad. <laughs> sorry, it doesn't matter. That was brutal. I didn't want to give you a call I'm sorry. <laughs> so at this point, um, they found out who Nicholas Flamel was. Well, it's Christmas. Harry gets his presents for the first time, which I thought they do a really good job of showing how, how Harry kind of grew up. Even though Ron was poor, you know, he still got presents. Ron's like, of course you got presents, duh. It's Christmas. Even though Harry's never gotten anything like that. It's before. funny. It's funny in the books because they go more into the books, but like, the Dursleys always send him a present, but it's always like a, a sock or, it's or a sock. sock. It's like brutal, but just like really, really mean. Um, and so he gets the invisibility cloak. He finds the mirror of Erised, and he sees his parents within the mirror. Right. It's what he wants the most in the world. That's what the mirror shows you. That's an important part. And I felt like that was one of the most important parts yes. of the movie. Yes. And again, I'm upset that they didn't show Dumbledore scene where he they ask him what he sees when he looks into it, and they say that he says. Something about looking, and he sees he wants a new pair of socks. And yeah, what? Why? why well, is it? well, then Harry is says, it it says, "Well, then it says Harry. <clears throat> Harry thinks that Dumbledore is lying to him. It was he, probably his sister. You find out in the seventh book that he probably saw like his really dark past. He had his sister, more than likely, his mom and his sister. Yeah. Okay. So, um, or Grindelwald naked. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> there's, there's, there's a theory going about. That I'm okay. That du- so here's it's, the thing. I was, I was like, oh, that's kind of sweet. <laughs> like, <laughs> so there's a theory that's going. That's probably of- what he was thinking. I was like, that's pretty sweet. <laughs> that is a naked and then you said, the gay comment. <laughs> so Rowling has stated Dumbledore is gay. Right. 
And there's a fan theory out there that Grindelwald and Dumbledore were in love with each other. People so, freaked out. People burned their Harry Potter books. I don't know. <laughs> really? Yeah, people were flipping out. <laughs> Anyways, so... Um, that his fictional character might be gay. <laughs> so Dumbledore moved the Mirror of Erised to an unknown, unknown location. So we find out that uh, Hagrid got an egg from a guy at a pub. He won it. It turned out to be a dragon. Uh, but they got caught by Malfoy, and so now they're in detention. Okay, hold on, hold on. Uh, how did he not know that there was a professor? Did they say he was wearing a cloak or something? In the in the book? Yeah, or in the wait, movie or whatever. What cloak? You're talking about in the in the dark forest? No, no, no. How did they? How did Hagrid not know who was giving him the egg? Yeah, they said he was wearing a cloak. Yeah, he's wearing did a cloak. they say he was just wearing a cloak? He was a hooded fellow. He had a hooded fellow, something like that. Yeah. Would you play someone that you can see his face? Yeah, I wouldn't draw someone. <laughs> That's what that's what Harry was saying later. Why would why would some random person be giving Hagrid an egg? Right. They just happen to do it. You know, so they he go into information about Fluffy. So they, yeah, so they go into the forest, um, they find unicorn blood. Turns out unicorn blood can keep you alive, but it curses you. So it's a way to keep you living, but it, it will curse you, which Voldemort doesn't it, care how's about. How does it curse you? It just does. Okay. it they say cause the unicorn's so pure. I get that unicorns are like all white and it. pure. It doesn't explain anything, but <laughs> yeah, that's say, it. Doesn't say anything about how it curses you. That's it. <laughs> Harry meets the cloaked figure uh, drinking the unicorn blood. Um, he gets saved by a centaur. The centaur uh, basically states, you're in danger. There's something here killing unicorns. There's a lot of evil going on, blah, blah, I blah. I feel like the, the unicorns, like they knew it was Voldemort. You they probably so? did, but in, they... In the books, they can see the future, or they can predict the future. But they're not going to okay. tell Harry that. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. So they go back to the castle. They I mean, figure... he's just the most important person in the world. <laughs> the, one <laughs> the one who, the boy who lives, but nobody yeah. leaves. <laughs> so let's keep this secret to us. <laughs> so Dumbledore, so Dumbledore gets called off. Uh, the one, who, the one little boy who could probably burn Voldemort. Let's not tell him. Okay, go ahead with his finger. So <laughs> near the end of the movie, Dumbledore gets called off to the Ministry of Magic or something like that. Um, they figure out that Snape is probably going to go tonight to try to uh, take the uh, Sorcerer's Stone. So they figure out music can uh, stop Fluffy. Well, they get up to the third floor, and they realize Fluffy's already asleep. And this is all protecting the stone. And what's yes, the stone called right. again? The Sorcerer's Stone. Or the Philosopher's Stone. The Philosopher's yeah. Stone. So why is this movie called the Sorcerer's Stone? Because Philosopher in England basically means like witch or wizard or magic. But over here, it, it, philosophy is referring to like, you know, um, deep thoughts and you know, ex, existential thinking. The Americans are intelligent enough to know. We Basically, all the, we all have vast enough language to know both words. Is that why? It, <laughs> no, I think like, is that the real it's really, why it, it's called sorcerer's it's really just stone instead of philosopher's she, stone? She regretted it. She said that she wished she used to have called it philosopher's stone and been done with it. But because it was her first book, she wanted to make sure it appealed to everybody, no matter what. But, yeah. but and they, so it's. When it comes to the English version, is it called Philosopher's, Philosopher's Stone? Stone? Yeah. Yes, in and the even, UK it really? is. Even the books, and then they had when they made the movie, they had to like replace that word. In in like the American books that we get here, is it called the Sorcerer or mm -hmm. Philosopher? Sorcerer. Sorcerer. In every single. Huh. Yeah. There also there's also different artwork for That's interesting. the UK. So or actually, I think every single country gets their own artwork, which I think is cool. Have y'all seen my set? Cool. My Harry Potter set. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It has like the Hogwarts and the binding of the book. It's Your what? Cool. My Hogwarts books. Those have new covers to oh, them, too, right? Yeah, okay. The new artwork. There's a, there's a bunch oh, of new artwork in those as well. You're talking like a figurine set. <laughs> I, have a, like, I have figurines have of you, everybody. Have you seen my, my set? <laughs> have you seen my Hermione? <laughs> <laughs> so, Harry, so Harry gets to the Mirror of Erised, and he sees not Snape, but Quirrell. Twist. Twist. <laughs> That's the big twist. In the we movie. talked about this yeah. earlier, but that wasn't one of the first twists we saw in a movie or a book before. Yeah. Yep. So it was a pretty big deal. Because there really wasn't that much hinting it was Quirrell in the book. No, there wasn't. And obviously, if you go back, you I can think, tell. I think the only scene is that there's a scene, and they have in the movie too, where Snape and Quill are arguing. But all Snape, but you don't know what. But like, it makes it sound like it's still Snape. More movies now, like they kind of hint at something and they kind of twist it to be something mm -hmm. else. So like, I, I feel like I don't know. I don't know if I figured it out or not. Again, I don't really remember. I definitely it, didn't figure it out. Yeah, I, but you guys were younger. And right. you guys didn't really have a lot of movie cinematic experience. That's right. So what happened was Quirrell uh, has been hosting Voldemort in his body. Um, Which is weird. Yes. <laughs> because at this point, you don't, 
You don't know this um, in the first... Casually first-ish. hosting. So he does the whole evil um, explain his plot thing, which didn't bother me too much because you needed to, to explain why it was Quarrel. Sure. So it wasn't that big of a deal. And then in the Mirror of Era said he says, he says, I can't, I can see the stone, but I don't know how to get it. Voldemort goes, use the boy. So uh, Harry walks up. So what does that mean? Like, I can see the stone, but I don't know how to get it. Like, he just sees the stone in the mirror. He so, sees, he's, he wants the stone. He sees it. That's what he desires. Apparently, it's somewhere in the room? No, apparently Dumbledore says, and again, I think this is, the whole plot's ridiculous, but Dumbledore says that the only person that can take the stone, if they really desire it, is the person that doesn't intend to use it. Okay. That was his magic. So yeah, yeah, that's any, what it was. Anybody could grab it, but that. they had to not want it. And because... I don't know. And, and Harry, and they Harry wanted to protect it. Right. That's why. And yes, it's it's crazy, but remember, it's magic. Okay. <laughs> it's not any more ridiculous than Harry being able to burn up Quarrel. Right. So, so what happens is... <laughs> so what happens is he, uh, he has a stone in his pocket. Voldemort knows that. Voldemort tries to tell him we can rule together... Uh, and he shows him his parents again, you know, but... Um, See, but I feel like when he mentioned his parents, it was like, that's why he saw him in the mirror. It, was it, kinda, it could also been, we don't, it doesn't, yeah. don't know. We're, but I thought, that was, I thought that was a pretty cool scene, though, it, it was honestly. really, especially when you Because it, it just kind of shows everyone, like, how much he wants to meet his parents. When you have yeah. Voldemort... Just by someone mentioning his parents... Like, he wants to meet that's, you so bad. That's a good point. And, and that's it was what creepy I kind of saw it Because you have his face and then their faces yeah. there, and it, it was just a weird image. So what happened was uh, they, get, they, they get into an argument. He says, no, I'm not going to join you. Uh, there's some why, does, why does Voldemort want him to join him? He doesn't necessarily want to jo- him to join. He just wants the Sorcerer's Stone. Yeah, he's that's all just, he wants. He, he's using Harry. That's stupid. Come on. See, you be, you've been used. <laughs> you have been tricked. <laughs> I guess I have. I'll lose a point. One of my dings is gone because I did not understand that. So, um, like, okay. Quarrel attacks him. <laughs> what are we going to do? Quarrel attacks him. my parents? Yeah! <laughs> Quarrel attacks, uh, and when Harry presses his hand against Quarrel's face, he starts to burn. Yes. Um... That is because, and Dumbledore mentions afterwards, because Ma- Harry's mom died to protect him, he has protection magic over Voldemort. And, yeah. which is really silly. You know, it makes sense. It's old magic. Okay, that's fine. You have protection because you got protected, you know. Mm-hmm. But the best thing about that is, yeah, it's kind of a really lame way to end the book, but they get rid of it almost immediately in two books later. Right, which is good. Which is great. Because when Voldemort actually comes... But don't they... In the, in the Goblet of Fire, they yeah. get rid of it. And that was that great scene, the creepy scene when yeah. he comes back, and he that long, he long, has his thing, long fingers, and, and he touches he's, oh, him. It's so good, and he and then like like Harry's just like screaming, he's just like laughing. Man, Ralph Fiennes is a great cast member for Voldemort. I know. I wish they gotten to me getting. Yeah, I know. He, his Voldemort's fine. He had, like, who, he had, a, he had voice, a nose. Who voiced him at the very? Beginning? I don't know. He had a nose. I didn't like it. <laughs> he should not have had a nose. And All right, so. Chris is talking about the Voldemort that was on the back of Coral's head. He had a, he had a nose, he, and his he eyes have a nose. Were, his eyes were, did not look like Ralph Fiennes, which yeah. obviously, Ralph Fiennes is a good actor. He had just done Schindler's List. He's not going to come back and start that. But, they sh- I mean, you know. It been- All right, let's talk about Dumbledore's dick move at the end where he, the house cup. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, at the end, it's Slytherin. That was, that was awful. Everything's in green. I would be so Every, pissed off if I was in, in Slytherin. And he goes, and he even... Does Gryffindor's fourth, blah blah blah, Slytherin wins. But we have more points to award. And he awards Harry, Ron, Hermione, and Neville, I think, like a hundred. It's, it's 50 for Hermione. 170 and Ron. points. Yeah, total. And I said, because he goes like 50 points for Hermione for doing blah blah blah. Ron gets 50 points for doing the best chase pace. I, I think it'd be funny if after every single one he was like, and now the score is this, and because her, because Slytherin still would have been in first place, and everybody would have been like, "Oh yay, Slytherin wins!" And then he'd be like, "No, no wait, so, <laughs> Harry gets score. sixty points." I got something happened to me in real life that really resembled that. What happened? All right, so uh, in college, I was a part of this amazing race, and we had to go all the way around the campus doing all these like different things. Well, at the very end, we won. Uh huh. So we celebrated for about 20 minutes, and they had, like, pizza for all the winners and everything like that. And then someone gets a call 
saying that all of our things didn't match up, we had one more thing to do. <laughs> so they screwed up and gave us, <laughs> but here's the thing. The prize was like $200 and we oh. were gonna split it between all of us. We're like, oh, we get $200, that's awesome. And they told us that we had to go, we were celebrating for 20 minutes and they told us that we had to go somewhere else to go do this last thing. When we, when we did it, someone else finished before us and we lost. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that is exactly... Totally your mistake, though. <laughs> it was not our mistake. Sounds they, like it was. Technically, they, it no, was. They no, something. no, no, but they gave us all the clues, and they said that we were done. All right, let's do, uh, let's do um, if you give points. No, I'll, I will do my one, last favorite line. Okay, good. Okay. Okay, so... Uh, oh, damn, I forgot. What's our favorite characters? Hold on. Yeah, you go on. I got to remember my line. <laughs> I can't characters. remember it. Hermione. That's your favorite <laughs> Why character. Why did you do this to me? That's it's your not, favorite character. No, it Hermione. wasn't. It was not Hermione. <laughs> Hermione's annoying. You're talking I think about my, her a lot. I, anyway, like, <laughs> just, <laughs> my favorite character is probably Snape. I think he's the best actor. Oh, go on your Snape rant. Oh, my Snape. Oh, my gosh. He's so good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I haven't heard it yet. I'm excited. So, obviously, huge spoilers. But at the end of the at the end of the series, Snape is basically a double agent for Dumbledore. He kills Dumbledore, but he does that on Dumbledore's orders. So he's like a double agent. He's working for Voldemort, but he's really working for the good side. But only he and Dumbledore knew knew that. So um, what happened was that's why he was at the uh, that's why he became headmaster to basically protect the kids. Right. Like they, it was bad, but he basically tried to reel everybody in. So at the end of the movie. Uh, seventh, the eighth movie, they get in the book. They get a his memories after Voldemort kills him for not, you know, killing Harry. Yeah. And the memories show, and they show this in the fifth book as well. They show him being in love with uh, Harry's mom, Lily, like madly in love, like super obsessed with uh, ha- her. The problem is, and uh, like oh, stalker. Yes, yeah, yeah, <laughs> basically, basically, like they were no, friends. No, really yeah. They were friends until. Uh, he called her a mudblood, which is like uh, bad, a bad term for a muggle-born. <laughs> right. Okay? It's like calling her the N-word. Essentially. <laughs> in the, no, it really is. Yeah. It really is. It really it really is. Essentially, yeah. yes. Yeah. So that's because he was hanging out with the Death like, Eaters. I wasn't joking. Like, he was basically hanging out with Death Eaters. So this is when Voldemort was still growing and he was with yeah. Death Eaters. Okay. Lily didn't like that. Right. Uh, so they basically hate each other. And also, uh, Harry's dad was mean to him, right. which is fine. Okay, fine. You, you hate Harry because his dad was a prick. And he looks like him. Yeah, and he took, <laughs> and he took a girl away. Right. Okay. Yeah. You know what? If you have a little bit of grudge, okay. Valid. But here's the issue. He holds on to this for like 30 or 40 years. Right. All the freaking time. Now, his, here's, here's the thing. At the end, he saves everybody, and everybody who reads these books and sees the movies loves Snape. His Patronus is Hurst Patronus. Right, right. They're like, oh, wow, he did it all for love. He's great. He's a great. He's my favorite character. He's no. Hero. He's a creep. <laughs> <laughs> this guy uh, held, on, held on to love for 40 years. I don't feel like that. Man. He was a dick to her kid. <laughs> He was also addicted to her. He called her mud he, blood. He, he basically killed them by saying by giving Voldemort the wrong address. <laughs> basically, <laughs> he told them where. He basically told them, "Oh no, it's hair. It's the pot. It's the Potters." And here's the thing: he he tells them it's the Potters on accident. Kind of. Voldemort goes and kills the Potters. He's all upset. He kind of forfeits himself to the servitude of Dumbledore, right? But then he's still a like, dick. A asshole to Harry. Like he, he, you think he changed his ways, but no, he's like. He doesn't. He, and he does some terrible things in the book. Gives him. He makes fun of Hermione's teeth. He gives him like detention all the time. Like he's he's a real jerk. I think he now look, Harry. Blood, like, like, he's yes. Let's guy. go back. Harry is kind of a dick in the books, anyways. Yeah. He is kind of a dick kid, but he doesn't deserve what he gets from Snape. Right. You know, because Harry does deserve detention sometimes. Right. Because yeah. he's kind of a prick. He, he talks back to his professor. But in the end. I don't know why people re- have so much reverence of Snape. Oh, he loved her. Sorry, if this was a real guy, <laughs> let's let's take any 20, 20 to thirty year old woman. Okay, if you had s- some dude following you and uh, going after you for t- twenty or thirty years, would you find that cute? After you got married. No, he's a yeah, creep. Yeah. He's a weirdo. He is a hero. He's he he he, has rede- courage. he, did, he, he, re- he, he saved redeemed everyone. himself, but he is not a good person. He's not a good person. That's the point. He is not. He should not be on the pedestal people put him on. All right, let's wrap up. Favorite character? No, we're not doing that. I'm so tired. Snape. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I pick Snape. Okay, John. I said Snape. I, I, I like Snape. I like Snape because I like Snape. 
He's it's only Hermione. What? Why he's a good slime? He why a good you slime I just like Snape because um, he's a good Al, slime ball. Alan Rickman nailed it. Perfect Snape. Oh. Perfect Snape. That's the only reason I like Snape. But I, I like the characters. The characters I, I do like the character because he he was looking out for Harry during this movie. I'm doing it just during this movie. I'm not doing it throughout the yes. movie. Yes. During this movie, okay. He looked in, out in, for in, Harry. in this movie, it's very black and white. You think he's a bad guy. He turns into a good guy. But later on, he becomes. It becomes more gray. He becomes more of a <clears> questionable <throat> dude. But we I just reviewed saying. this right, movie, right, so right. I like Snape. No, no, no. I, I Here like goes Snape John. Too. I like Snape now, too. Now he's trying to skip the script. Okay, good. Who's your favorite character? Who was yours, John? He said Snape. I said he said Snape. Snape. Yeah, Snape. Hermione. It was Snape. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think my favorite character in this um, probably was uh, either Hagrid or Harry. I like Hagrid just because he, he plays that really good mentor role for him. Uh-huh. And I like Harry in this because he's you. He's basically you in the book. You're yeah. discovering there's, this place. There's a couple of movies. I would say Hagrid's probably my favorite character. Yeah. But in this movie, it's Snape. Hagrid is so pure. He's so great. Because he, yeah. the giants are like violent characters. Okay, so. But let me just say. Hagrid, Harry. All right, Snape. Hermione. Seven-year-old <laughs> Hermione. <laughs> She's eleven. Doesn't eleven. Make okay, let my me just, bad. Let me just say, okay. eleven-year-old Hermione. I'm gonna completely ignore that. Before we go into points, I am gonna plug in one more song here because I want to play that. Song. Oh, we need to talk about the score. The, the score, score is, here is amazing. This is so John Williams. Go, John Williams. The first, the, okay, the main score, the dun, 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 it's so whimsical. It's, it's very it's iconic. Perfect. It's it perfect. is so iconic. Gosh, it's good. But I really like. I think the other one's underrated. Is the, uh, the, the I'll play it here, but it's the last song. So it's such a good theme. It is a, oh it's man, a this great, is probably the best theme we've. It's well, it's definitely story. the best theme we've heard. But it's definitely the best. Theme this I've series heard. definitely brings a lot of memories back for me. It's def. It, man, these. I know they're not the best movies in the world, but for me, especially when I first saw them, it was the. Here's best what I'm going to say about the movies in general. None yeah. of them are the best, but it is so impressive how they built this, and and like all the characters stayed the same except for like the people that died. You can't help that. Hogwarts always looked the same. He always scenery, had, the cap, the scenery, the costumes. You always had that same feel to it. It was really impressive how they nailed that. It was, I mean, Marvel's doing it right now, but like the fact that there's eight movies and they all made you feel the same. I mean, it was really well done. Especially when you walk, like man, if you have a chance to go to the Wizarding World, any of them, you should. You gotta go because it does. Man, it hits that scenery and that feel of those movies so much. Right. John, think and points. Thoughts and points. Uh, I like the movie. I, I didn't really have anything to go off of other than just like the last couple of times I've seen it within the last couple of years. But I liked it. I'll, I'll give you a point, Justin. Finally. Um, you didn't make me hate the movie. I'll see it again. I'll give it. I'll give you a point. So you um, got two points. <clears throat> yeah. Are we going to watch the second one and third one? I want to get my – can I talk about my review? Please yeah. Do. My thoughts. I love this movie. We have plenty of time, <laughs> we have plenty of time so go ahead. <laughs> Mic drop. I love this movie. Boom. It was one of the first movies I saw as a kid um, that I actually read the book about. The atmosphere, um, the costumes, the story, everything about it. I, I, re- I always love these movies. You know, it's, it's you know they're not the, like you said they're not the best movies in the world. They're not the best acted, but they do the, a great job of giving you the feeling of the books, which I think a lot of movies nowadays cannot do. Yep, yep. We are watching Chamber of Secrets. I'm fine with that. All right, I'm okay. It's my least that favorite. Too. It's my least favorite book movie, but it's my least favorite book. Yeah, I think for a lot of people, Chamber of I've Secrets only is. Too. <laughs> it's actually it's one of the more interesting books in my opinion, lore wise, because it's the first time we kind of get to understand a little bit about Voldemort. Um, okay, well, sounds good. Um, so yeah, you got two points. Good job. Finally, yeah. God damn. All right, um, I'm just gonna do Harry. I think you're tired with me. I'm just gonna do Harry Potter all the time I now. Don't remember. I'll have to keep. I'll, I think I'll, you're tired I'll with count me. up tonight. What's right. next, Chris? Next week. We are going to be doing, uh, like we talked about a couple weeks ago, We're going, the Avengers Infinity War is coming out, which I think we're all excited about. 
It's kind of a long... When's it coming out? 27th of April. 27th of April, next week. All right. (laughs) And, uh... Let's hope we got that right. (laughs) (laughs) And we, uh... So anyways... (laughs) Uh, As in most, watch it be know. coming out like three weeks after. Yeah. after <laughs> do we do this? <laughs> That'd be awkward. <laughs> but uh, as y'all, most of y'all know, because I'm sure a lot of y'all have seen these movies. Spider-Man is in the universe, so we are going to watch. Is he? Yeah. Are you gonna, sure? <laughs> we're going to watch the animated Spider-Man show. Did y'all watch this when you were little? I totally. Love I love. Totally. That. All right, we're yeah. gonna give this to Justin. Though. This is gonna be oh, Justin's yeah. show. Oh God, Justin, this is your show. I, I watched yes. it. I watched it when I was older. So now it's time for you to do a lot of research on Spider-Man. Oh, give good us luck. Points and uh, good. So luck. we're gonna watch season one of the animated Spider-Man series. That is what I'm good at. That's right. Fun facts. You know what I really hate about these podcasts is we have to do like actual research about like some of these yeah shows. And you gotta watch like, a lot it's, of TV. it's it's. You gotta watch like a lot of the shows, and you gotta do a lot of research. I don't do a lot of research. It's like homework, and they're not good. I have a bunch of crap. <laughs> I have a bunch of useless crap in my mind, yeah. anyways. I so, like Justin, you don't do any research when it comes. Not to this. much. I, I know a lot of stuff I'm talking about. I don't want to sound like I'm super smart, but I am. Next week is Spider Man, the animated series from 1994. I think. Is it 94? Crap. I think so. It might be 95 or 96. Dang. What, between 94 and 96. We'll find out next week. So that that's. That's like mid. Do you remember it though? Did you watch I mean, it? I do remember. I remember the the spider yeah. like the whatever. The I remember song. really liking. Spider I think, blood. I think, spider blood. <laughs> yeah, I think it's in the first season. I really, I remember liking the uh, symbiote saga. It's like a five episode. Stretch. The what? The symbiote, the the black suit. Oh, okay. You remember that? No. You remember they did it in the third the third movie. It's called a symbiote. Oh, I, I know it's venom, called symbiote. The venom suit. I, I knew. Yeah. I know venom. I didn't know it's called. What is it? It's a good thing it's not symbiote. It's a good thing it's not John's. Shit. Symbiote. Right. Symbiote. Symbiote. Yeah. Okay. I could do Batman. Batman the animated series. I watched every single episode of Batman. We'll the get there series. when uh, I, I did DC not watch the animated series. Gets their shit together. So. <laughs> if DC ever gets their shit together. We'll watch it. We'll <laughs> watch Batman. <laughs> um. Mind your chair. I want that chair next week. You can listen to it next week. Can you let him finish? So listen to to us on Spotify, (laughs) iTunes, Google Play, and YouTube. John, Uh, where can we find us social media wise? Not Twitter. (laughs) Yeah, are we just delete that? Can we start it? (laughs) No, we probably have to keep it. All right, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook at Another Man's Pod. And you can email us at Another another Man's Pod at gmail.com. And I say nothing about social media because I do nothing on it. You don't do anything anywhere. <laughs> no, I just, I just, I'm just here. I just talk with your Harry Potter fun facts. That's right. All right. I forgot my wands and my my scarf today. I'm pretty disappointed. I'm pretty sad. Thank you guys for listening. Um, see you next week. Bye. <laughs>